I'm glad you've stuck with me so far. We are now ready to begin our preparations to deploy to Heroku. We are selecting Heroku because it's um, free. Uh, some of the other, you have other options. You can, uh, there's AWS, um, Microsoft Azure. Um, you can just look into it. There's many different options, but we're going to deploy to Heroku because it's free and um, because they provide for a Postgres module uh, for free as well. So, so the first thing we need to discuss when we talk about deployment is environment variables. So what is an environment variable? Well, first we've got to talk about environment. Right now, the environment which, with which our, de um, our development has concerned itself has been uh, on our local machine, and we've set up uh, our local port on our local machine to run it whenever we run our API and spin it up. It runs on our local machine on a very specific port that we set. But when we deploy to Heroku, or you deploy anywhere else, this port that it runs on is going to be dynamically set to a value that you won't know ahead of time. As a matter of fact, is the value could change um, at random by uh, the company you go with without you even knowing it. Your app will still run, but the port value could change based on the needs of the company. And so we need a way to be able to provide for working with our code base both in development mode as well as production mode. And we accomplish that through environment variables. So we talked about environment. We have a local environment and then we have a production environment on, for instance, Heroku. The way we do that is we set variables that will be unique to each environment. And these variables um, we store in a file that we're going to add to our code base here. And the values that we put in this file are not going to be pushed up to GitHub. These are values that you set that um, enable you to work with your code base. But the values that we put in there are going to contain potentially API keys, um, secrets, uh, when we start working with authentication and passwords and setting up that, which we're going to do after we deploy, um, we need to be able to provide a way of setting up values that enable our API to be secure without pushing up certain things to GitHub. For instance, let's say you're a developer and the company gives you your own personal API key to a SQL you know, database, and that's your, your personal API key, and you need to use it whenever you work with the code base, and nobody else should have it. And so you work with a file where you stick that value in, but it doesn't get pushed up to GitHub because you would not want that value to be on GitHub where the whole world could see it. So we are going to work with environment variables, and these variables will change depending on what environment we're going to run in. That's all conceptual. It's a lot of words. Let me um, show you what I'm talking about. For instance, right now, our code base, we have set up, we've hard-coded the port to be at 5,000. And um, this works for us for development. It's all right. But um, we want to be able to set a value where this can work in both Heroku as well as um, when we're in development mode. And we do that through setting up an environment variable file. And we do that down here, and this file needs to be um, put in the root directory. So we're going to go down here, and we're going to add a new file. We're going to new file, and the name of this file is .en. V. And that's it. Um, all, um, like Node is, is not the only language that works with this type of concept. If you work with like C Sharp or Java or any other um, 
server language, they all provide for these environment variable values with a file like this. So this is uh, very common um, when it comes to writing APIs. And so this file is where we're going to stick values, our variables, and these variables we're going to refer to uh, in our code base. And so let's just do that. For instance, right now we have a, a variable called port and I hard-coded it to 5,000. Let me first change this to a lowercase cc port. And if I do it there, I got to do it there, and I got to do it there. I got to do it there and there. So P-O-R-T. All right. So if I wanted to refer to this file, I refer to it in the code base by the name process.env and that refers to this file. And so let's go to this file and stick our port and the convention in the industry is that the variables that you stick in this env file be all caps. It's not required but it is convention and so um, if you want to write code that is going to be accepted by your peers and they're going to understand what you're doing, then make these all capitals. And so in here, let's put our port at, I don't know, let's change it. Let's make it 6,000. And let's save this file. And then let's go back here. And, and the way we refer to this value right here is we put dot port. So this part refers to this file and this part re refers to the particular key value pair. And this is a key value pair. I know it isn't written like a typical object. You know, a typical object in JavaScript, you know, looks like this with, you know, port, you know, and then that would be 6,000 and then comma. And then you separate them and you write all your key value pairs in here. But this will get parsed as an object where this is the key and this is the value. And so the way we ref this refers to that file, and then this refers to the particular variable that we want. You can list all your variables in here, and we're going to do that. We're going to list a Postgres. We're going to list a you know database environment. We're going to list an environment like production or development. We're going to do things like that in here. And so right now we're pointing to the port. And if this file for some reason doesn't exist, we can put an OR statement and list like an alternate, like our, our typical fallback. So right now, let me save this, and let me save this file, and let's spin up our server and see which one it picks. So I will do yarn server. And it picks 5,000. So why did it pick 5,000? I, I just got done telling you that this is how you point to the file and this is how you point to the value. And that is true. But in order for um, our code base to know how to work with this file, we need to install a package. And so let me take you to npm. And this is the package we need to install, d-o-t-e-n-v. And, but it, it's a zero dependency module that loads environment variables from a .env file into your process env. And so this is how we install it. Here or here, if you're using npm or yarn, and then this is how we require it. So let's just copy the require. I'm gonna copy that require. And let's go to our code base. And the documentation, if you read it, um, later on, it tells, it instructs you to load it as high as possible and as soon as possible in your code base. You want it, you want it to be able to be able to read all the values in here before you read any other code because other code might refer to it. And so we're going to stick it right up at the very top. And I'm going to stick that right there. Require dot.env right at the very top of your index file. Now, um, it crashed because it hasn't found this module. So now let's install the module. Let me split my screen here, get a terminal up here, and I'm going to do yarn add dot 
env. Now it's going to install it. And look it. As soon as we install it, our server found it, and now it's running on port 6000. So this was just a short little lesson just to get our DOT ENV module installed to introduce environment variables to get you to have an ENV file set up. In the next video, we're going to be adding values to this file here, and we're going to be referring to certain setups in here. We're going to place values in here with ENV values so that our um, code base knows how to operate. One final thing before um, we end the video, these, like I said, this file should not get pushed up to GitHub. It, it's going to potentially contain API keys and secrets and other values that you do not want to be made public, especially to hackers. And so in order to ensure that, make sure that af after you create the file, you go to your git ignore. I'm going to do that right now and look and see. Most git ignores will have it in there, but just make sure it's in there. That .env is in the git ignore file. For those of you who don't know what the purpose of the git ignore file is, is any file with extensions or or any anything referred to in the git ignore file will not get pushed up to GitHub, and um, that is the purpose for the git ignore file. So I'll save that, and in the next video we're going to go to Heroku and we're going to start setting it up. We're going to start setting up our Postgres database and um, I hope you join me. Thank you.